Welcome back everyone, this is Shadow Drake, and this topic is going to be custom compression chambers because it's one of the easiest things. So to that, before we start, we're going to talk about heat exchangers because when you start to get to the uh, custom phase change devices, uh, you're going to need to have a heat exchange port because after all, keep in mind the uh, evaporation and condensation chamber do have this heat exchange connection. And so when you make custom devices, you don't have the luxury of that so you have to figure out what you're going to do and so we've covered a counterflow heat exchanger as basically the best thing to go between our two phase change areas but we got two others to go for and here we have the small direct heat exchanger um this one is made in a tier one pipe bender and it's meant to be the really really weak end uh, you know, small ones. Something you can make, at least with the tier 1 setup. So you do have the ability to do something. But because it's small, it's definitely weaker. Large directs. And then you have the large direct heat exchangers, which require tier 2 pipe bender. So that, that means steel and invar. Compared to the small one, you're just using copper and steel. So you have the capability of mass producing the smalls. But they're, again, I'm not entirely sure what their exchange rate is because it doesn't really say it doesn't really say just how good it is uh, I, I think somebody will have to look it up in the files uh, there is another heat exchanger but that is supposedly deprecated and so will eventually will not be used that'll be the normal heat exchanger and it looks like this funky little four thing so this is the deprecated one, and the easiest way to tell is the new ones that devs released recently have this little faceplate to let you know when, how much heat exchange you're getting across the, the whole thing. Uh, one thing to note, the large directs need a frame of space. The small ones do not care. You can have it floating. The same thing with the other heat exchanger that's deprecated. It does not need a frame. However, it's also a tier 2, so at that point, I don't exactly know whether this is better than the large or better than the counterflow, but eh, we'll, we'll go with it. Alright, so, oops, I kind of left this going, so let's uh, disconnect these, because my pipes are growing in. Okay, so, to make a custom compression chamber, it's actually fairly simple. As you can see, I kind of kept the old stuff so that you can kind of see what change to be the new and if you've seen the other face change uh, video it's basically a pump that pushes gas into some volume and now the condensation chamber has a volume of 500 uh, 200 liters and this one has 550 liters and honestly the only reason I have this uh, higher capacity is for liquid stress as you can see this one's already at 100 Celsius which kind of shows how weak the uh, small one is because it's not exchanging much Compared to this one, it's also the same size, but it's, all, it's at a, hovering at a nice 63 compared to 108. So, just with that, you can kind of see that th this is actually a custom chamber. And yeah, I've, that's from filling the pipes. Nothing to worry about. And you can see the small one is at 3.2 kilojoules being pushed down there. As this one is roughly double that at half the temperature if that gives you a good indication of just how good or bad it is at that and as far as the phase change setup i pressurize both pipes so that we cannot so that there is no bias regarding that part of the system so there's more liquids in here because this is cooler you know more of the pollutants that evaporate will will uh Con uh, condense you see 5.10 latent heat this one is a little bit more and now it's dropping because I removed the uh, heat over here so now there's these are not gonna work as hard so yeah that's basically a very simple setup for a compression chamber and quite honestly the volume isn't necessary. It's only there in case you have something wonky happen and uh, you need the extra volume either because you have an inrush of gas be trying to become liquids that these condensation valves, you know, if you forget to turn them on, you actually have a chance to react. Maybe. 
but uh, the other big thing is typically if that empties out, that's got to be really hot, and this is going to be really hot as well. I don't see how you could ever have problems in the gas pipe except for overpressurization. So, with that, uh, custom compression chamber, uh, literally a pump. I would recommend volume pumps. And the volume pumps that you use depend on this gas pipe. Uh, I'm using a turbo because this is a 280 liter pipe and honestly even at 100 liters that can't keep it empty. You want it as empty as possible but I mean if it's just a single pipe uh, a normal volume pump will work but keep in mind lower volume here means lower flow through the counter flow. Alright now how to optimize these things. Uh, this There's really not much to it to this and it is kind of up to user preference. The only real way to optimize whether condensation occurs or not is honestly pressurizing this pipe network with another pressure and gas. So what I'm going to do is swap these both to direct pressurize the one in the back and we will see what happens. So uh, be right back. All right, we're back. So we fixed up a few things. Uh, we'll swap this back to a large direct so that we can kind of see what's the differences. Uh, so this is back to, well, it's a better number. And we pressurized this pipe network with nitrogen. And to be honest, all of this nitrogen is just providing a pressure gas so that the pollutants will very happily condense as soon as they hit this pi pipe network. And just like before, pressurizing the liquid pipe, uh, you see I have a lot of standing pollutants in here. So that's not ideal, but I mean, if I had a custom evaporation chamber, you know, as a, or a second evaporation chamber, this would be absolutely great for that because then I'd, you know, all this liquids would also be doing work somewhere else as opposed to this one that's just stuck full. But uh, as far as latent energy goes, it's it's again gonna allow it to condense as soon as possible and kind of, that's kind of probably the only way you can really set a temperature but it's extremely difficult for the condensation chamber because you got to factor in that the warmer this gets the higher the temperature you will have but i mean 900 moles of nitrogen you know removing that is probably about 4.2 megapascals and you know, give or take. You know, let's just say conservative 4.3. And if we look at the pollutants uh, Celsius, because so 4.3 megapascals. So essentially, I'm only compressing pollutants to about 64 Celsius at the minimum. So this thing should stay at about 64 Celsius. Compared to this, will be whatever the heck is in here. So yeah, you see the temperatures are roughly the same. This one has a little bit more, but again, that's because any free pollutants that come in here will immediately condense. Uh, that's 890 versus 770, yep. And if I were to disconnect these, unfortunately I had that set up for the evaporation chambers, so I probably should have done that here. Yep, uh, this one is going to increase a little bit faster. Again, I didn't do anything different other than add the 900 moles of nitrogen. Uh, both chambers were filled with about 1,400 moles of pollutants. And as you can see, that one that's enough to get it to 7.2 here. But once I added the 900, oof, that filled up quick. Ugh. So, this is why I don't like pollutants. The groaning pipes. Anyways. 49.6, 49.5. So that's basically a custom condensation chamber. The only real way to set the, the temperature for how far you want to heat it is to put a different pressure and gas in here. Now, for the cold liquids, that's not going to really be an option for you because, again, oxygen is the closest thing you have. But then, as soon as it gets high enough pressure for oxygen to condense, that's going to condense too. But. Uh, 
a really hot planet set up. Yeah, nitrogen, CO2, volatiles if you're feeling particularly risky. <laughs> and, uh, what was the other one? Nitrogen? I said nitrogen, right? Nitrogen, oxygen, volatiles. Anyways, maybe hydrogen when they finally release that. Uh, oh yeah, and because I'm using volume pumps, uh, obviously I am pushing out a lot of thermal energy, so uh, if anything, you want to make sure that the evaporation side works how you want to, because you're going to use up a lot of power on making a compressor. And li like I said, you could use a normal volume pump, but that's going to be very slow for emptying this out. And there's not much coming out because there's not much heat. The evaporation chambers are capped out. Let's add you guys again. It's not going to do much, but it'll add up. But yeah. Uh, with that in mind, that's it for the basic custom compressor. Uh, uh, again, you you. it's honestly better to just use your own custom compressor compared to the condensation chamber. Just because you can get greater volumes out of it. But, I mean, it's up to you. 50 watts versus however many pumps would require. And that's going to start increasing as that evaporation chamber evaporates more. But yeah, uh, when we come back, I think I am going to kind of take a quick swerve to see how counter flows kind of work together because we're going to get to a point where these flows are going to be kind of variable especially when the load on this is good i mean after all if i set this to three thirty thousand eighty for both of them they're going to start working hard and you see you get quite a lot of flow going so we're gonna i'm gonna come back take a quick you know, break to see what's what's the optimal flow we want to make these counter flows work well. And uh, we will be back. Uh, thank you for your time and have a good day.